Seconds matter when severe weather hits, but for the deaf and blind community, hearing or seeing the warnings, it's not always possible. No, and Abil Ramadna shows what's being done to make sure they are prepared when bad weather rolls in and brings us perspective from a man who had a really close encounter. Caught in a storm and driving through an area with bad cell reception. We kept trying all these different routes and kept getting blocked because of the flooding. David Coco, who's deaf, didn't know which road would lead him to safety. And with no cell service, he had to guess. We needed a way to see what roads were closed right now and which ways are dangerous and which ways are safe for us to drive. When severe weather strikes, the sirens sound. Emergency alerts go out and news stations. And this is going to be widespread heavy rain. Warn viewers. But what if you can't hear or see what's going on? The only really way to be prepared for the weather is knowing that it's coming, right? Trevor Boucher, lead forecaster with the National Weather Service, says seconds matter when there's danger. And that's why his team is working with the deaf community to improve the warning systems. Almost all of the alarms are auditory reliant. Uh, they require your hearing to use them. It's only been up until recently that you've had options. Before, we depended on the TV, always the TV, and now it's kind of moved to our mobile devices. But there are still challenges. He says it can be hard to follow closed captioning, and if you miss something, that can be dangerous. Being able to pull it up on my phone has helped a lot. Being alerted can save a life. That's why the Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired has a plan in place for their students and staff. Communication and planning are part of their response. We use our phone systems, we use our PA system uh, just to make sure that our students understand, you know, when severe weather is coming. While major advancements have been made, some things still pose a major problem. Sometimes, you know, we don't sleep with a telephone. We put it you know, across the room or across the house, so we can't depend on that. And that's why Boucher and others are working to improve the system for everyone. You know, now that we're listening, we're, we're starting to figure out how we can actually do that. Nabil Ramadna, KXAN News. It's a really important reminder. If you live in Central Texas, you know the month of May is historically a rainy season. Yeah, we have seen a lot of our worst flooding events. One of the worst Memorial Day weekends, that was six years ago. Absolutely. Unfortunately, it produced historic flooding on the Blanco River and swept an entire family of nine away in their rented cabin. There was only one survivor, two bodies of two children never found. A total of 14 people died that weekend in our area. Flooding reached parts of the Austin area area, including South and Central Austin. But Austin's deadliest flood was actually 40 years ago this week. In 1981, a foot of rain fell over northwest Austin. It triggered the Memorial Day flash flood on Shoal Creek that killed 13 people. The flood sent Shoal Creek tearing through Lamar Street and even businesses in and around the area. Guys, there's so much to talk about here, and I'll tell you what, we're going to be uh, discussing this more in depth coming up on Kicksing and Weather and Traffic uh, on the CW Austin. But some of the lessons we've learned and some of the progress we've made since that time, you know, 40 years ago, we, we've put the river gauges up. We talked, again, the community communication aspect of this, like Nabil was just telling us, we're firing off updates on your phone now on social media, emails, radio, TV. You know, it's we're using these events to learn, but it's still so important to go back and look at those events that that have just scarred us here in Central Texas.